This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. Today, in the arena, you may have guessed it, Gruel. This new flavor of Gruel is actually tearing my control decks apart limb from limb, and it's infuriating. It's very, very brazen. Very sentinel. No, that doesn't work. Very chariot. No, that... Anyway, it's very frustrating having a new aggro deck in town, and none of my removal or sweepers is really tuned to beat it, because whereas you can have good removal and shadows verdict against most decks, the black removal spells and shadows verdict don't really stop the Asika's Chariot and Goldspan Dragon as well as you need them to, nor do they remove the Great Henge very much. When Gruul Adventures got pushed out of the meta, in recent months, largely by Saltai Ultimatum, the Gruul deck failed to speed up, but a new version was waiting below the surface. And this comes to us from Hall of Fame Magic the Gathering player, somebody who's played in more Pro Tours than anybody else on the planet, member of Harayuya Pro Team, MPL's Raphael Levy. Now, Raphael Levy, one of the greatest of all time, started tweeting about this list in recent months and in a push for actually one of the most impressive things I've ever seen somebody try to do, double number one mythic. And as it sits in the tweets I saw today, number three on the ladder, number one on the limited ladder. So he did hit number one, though, at one point. It's just by the time he hit number one on the other, he was pushed out of the other and so on. But that's really impressive impressive and such a tough thing to pull off i hope he gets there but in standard in the in the on the ladder he's been playing this deck also go follow Raphael levy on twitter uh, i just showed it there really quick if you want to see the sideboard and maybe a guide for best of three that kind of content is there now you might look up and down this and say okay Sure, you took away some of the Brushfire Elementals and Landfall cards like the Mammoth, and instead you added Magda Brazen Outlaw and Jaspera Sentinel to produce the mana, because we don't want to hit lands in the same way, that fell behind too much. Now we just want to ramp into the Dragon or the Mythic Artifact and go nuts. Alright, that makes sense. But CGB, where are the new cards? Where are the new cards? Magda's been around. Sentinel's been around. And it's true. This deck could have been played for quite a while. So why is it seeing the surge of popularity now? I think the Sentinel and the Magda add a burst of speed along with the Rimrock Knights that does get you through Emergent Ultimatum, whereas the other version never found it. But there's also this little card in the mana base. Raphael Levy in a tweet says, trust me. Okay, because this card taps for a colorless, one in a tap adds a mana of any color, or tap, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Activate only uh, as a sorcery, and only if you've cast an instant or sorcery this turn. We don't appear to have a bunch of instants and sorceries until you remember that every single adventure creature is also an instant or sorcery and we have a shatter skull smashing so maybe we will get to use the horror the hall of oracles in that way this deck also seems to have a lot of spare mana lying around once the treasure engine gets rolling and the biggest reason i was skeptical of the deck is it didn't seem to have many ways to use that mana so i'm curious to see if pumping it into hall of oracles is reasonable or how that works out Today's video is dedicated to Eric Bussamonte, who is the latest YouTube member at the time I started recording. You too can become a YouTube member by going below and joining. You support the channel for $4.99 a month if you enjoy the content. I really appreciate it. Some special perks include early access to some of my special projects. Right now, the current Covert Gold Lore episode is available only to members for a limited time. It will be public soon. And you also get early access to my deck list. So if you join the Discord channel, there's a special channel that YouTube members can access that give you access to the list I'm going to play 24 hours early so you can get ahead of what all the other fans are diving in on. Now we have introduced the deck, we have credited the creator, we have talked about several of the cards, and now we uh, did the dedication. So it's time to dive in. Let the gruel nonsense begin. Get ready to enroll in Strixhaven University with our back to school promotion. Take 15% off all Mystical Archive singles and receive a free pair of Covert Go Blue and MTG Nerd Girls exclusive tokens when you use the promo code B2S at checkout. 
The promotion ends May 2nd. So head over to CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. I am 1051 on the ladder, and I'm putting my fate in the hands of a gruel deck. Pray for me. There's only like two days left in the season or something like that. I'm an absolute maniac. I could be 95% in no time, but a gruel deck did get me back into top 1200 once upon a time. All right, on the play. On the play. You go first. Easy. Luris. All right. We don't have anti-rogues tech. We just go hard and hope that's good enough. No ramp here. It's far from ideal. I don't think we mulligan it. We do have 12 one drops. We didn't draw one. It's a little sad. The opponent plays a tap land. All right. We'll go for the Magda. We could have also played the Rimrock Knight. And then the Magda could come down, pump it to a 4-1. Then it, when it attacks, it would get a treasure. Maybe that's better. But this way, we might still get to use the Rimrock Knight's Boulder Rush before we play it. Let's see if the opponent has a removal spell right on time. But a Heartless Act can kill a dragon, so getting that out of the way doesn't make me sad. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at this. Glad we saved the Rimrock Knight now. Give me that card. Oh. Opponent's got to catch up. What are you going to do? Turn one played nothing. Turn two removal spell. They are rogues. Rogues has a lot of instant speed. They said go. They said go. So I think they want to ambush this. I don't think we want to risk playing the boulder rush. And I think we want to play this on red. So we're going to do... This doesn't hold priority. So we're going to do this. And we're going to do uh, this. Draw that card right away. Okay. Now, do we want to trade the Bone Crusher Giant Stomp ability with a Soaring Thought Thief and the Edge Walling Keeper? I don't think so. I think we're just fine doing this. Take it. Nice. Pass the turn. Thieves Guild. Mark some stops. If the opponent plays nothing else here, we want to stomp this on their before their draw step. If they do play something else here, yep, then we stomp now. Now, if the opponent wants to attack to get some mills in, they're going to be in trouble on the next swing. Yeah, they're going for it. They want that graveyard to have some cards in it. If they hold up mana, running this into Drown in the Lock doesn't sound great, but playing this and drawing a card does. So let's see what they do. They're also taking a ton of damage. Okay. Play this won't hold priority, so let's do this. I don't want to run the dragon into drown in a lock, so we'll play this. Draw a card. We'll get the opponent to commit mana later, and then the dragon will run wild. Ooh, another threat. All right, let's go to combat. They could have another thought thief. Let's hold back the innkeeper since we still have more good cards here. Actually, at this point, if they go down to 11 and they're facing this much power and a dragon and we kill their Thought Thief, I don't need any more cards from this Innkeeper. Here it comes. Uh-huh. All right, that's 10 points of power coming at you. Six cards in the graveyard. Make it eight. The opponent's still swinging here. I mean, sometimes you just mill until I, you gotta take mill all the way. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, opponent. I don't know if that's gonna do it. So this gets me two treasures, right? And plus two, and a little bonus. I mean, is this just... Okay, there's still a stick, but they can draw a card with this card. Guess we'll go like this. Is it lethal? Draw a card. Uh, that's a lot of damage.
Treasure, treasure. What's your pleasure? Okay, there's another removal spell. Thanks for letting me have the treasures. Let's go ahead and deploy another potentially lethal threat with all the mana. Magda! This is why we said this card was really good in the set review. Just didn't really get its time until now. Goodbye, rogues. <laughs> Their name is Red Mage. Let's go. On the play, Love Struck Beast. On the draw, Love Struck Beast. Two cards that absolutely suck because they can't block, but Love Struck Beast, I think, is enough. I think it's enough. At least they didn't, you know, you can, you can say that they're predictable, but they're not a liar. Sentinel. All right. Would really love another green source. But we'll see what happens. Does the opponent just have Bone Crusher Giant? Are they ready to go with that? If they kill this, we really need to draw another green. If they attack, do I just block? Yeah, good job. <laughs> Going first, OP. Green! Son of a... All right, we do this. Uh-huh. On the bright side, no attacksies. <laughs> um... Oh, I think the play is to do this. Into a this. Not my finest hour. Here comes Embercleave. Here comes Embercleave. Or a Torbran. That's pretty strong too. Could be worse though. Because this little human is going to fight this giant. And try to get us out of this. Um, let's see. If I tap this, it makes one, two mana. Ugh. Stuck on mana is sad. But. I think we have to play this. Less lands. Big sad. But what if the opponent has all lands, right? I'm sure that happens sometimes, right? Don't frostbite me, bro. Don't do it. Oh, no. No. How could you? I'm sure this is fine. I'm sure, I'm sure nothing bad will happen here. Uh-huh. 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 Epic. Wow. What a what a warrior. More dragons. More of our five drops than lands. <laughs> Call that a wrap. On the draw too, I'd like to add. Somebody run the math on that. <laughs> Somebody run the math on this. What the hell is happening? <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess that's a mole. Cool. <laughs> that is... That is... That's fine. Um, still a slow hand. Can't have a one drop, so... And no accelerant. Against Yorian, maybe I cut the Bone Crusher Giant. Or the Henge. The Henge might... Yeah, it's just asking too much, I think. But I'm pretty sure we lose. Against any good hand from the opponent, we're probably just dead here. We're too slow. We can hope the chariot does something. It's just like, wow, how low can you go trying to have an aggressive hand? I guess I could have gone to five. Probably should have. Coulda, woulda. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Awkward draw. Okay. Let's see if the opponent blocks with one or two here. If they only block with one, we can bone crush. Nice. 
protect our rim to the rock. Maybe next turn shatter our way through, or just play a chariot. Okay, Sentinel down. So we're going to lose a spell. Of course we'd draw another one. <laughs> All right. Um, so we can kill this and get him for three, or we can chariot. I think we need to chariot. The opponent will take one of these. We'll still have the other for next time. Twenty-two life. Lots of stuff already on board. Yorian looming. Doesn't look good. Looks very bad. So how aggressive do we need to try to be? The Magda's interesting. The smashing's revealed. We could shoot this and attack with these and see what happens. If we play a Magda and we crew the chariot and they kill the chariot, then any sweeper leaves us in a bad spot. If we play the Magda, though, it can crew the chariot and we can attack with all, or we can just attack with the cats. I don't know. I don't know what the right play is. But I feel like we just have to be threatening. Against Extinction Event, I would love to have a Bone Crusher Giant down. We could also just play it slow. We could just attack with the cats. But we have to remember Omen of the Sun. I think we're going to play it risky. We're too far behind not to uh, do nothing here. Do I trade this? I don't think so. Yeah, let's just try to force them to deal with these. I have changed my mind. Don't Shark Typhoon me, though. It'll make me sad. Oh, come on now. All right. So. Pretty good trick I got here. You guys ready for a trick? It's pretty nice. All right, so crew here, crew here. Makes two treasures. And then we can cast this for two. And we kill the shark and the token and leave the board clear. The chariot was safe. And now the opponent has to figure out how to deal with the threats on the board, and hopefully the chariot, like the chariot's still around to go with the bone crusher and hit them. But we've got a lot of hits that we need to deliver, or we're just gonna die a hideous death. Like extinction event here would be so painful. Ow. I guess we get a 4-4 now if it dies, so it could be worse. By Yorian, of course. Dragon. Can't play that. Not until next turn, but this is okay. What you got? What you got? Goldspan does not get through Yorian very well. All right, trying to keep the Skyclave Apparition. Plans to play a Yorian. So, with that knowledge, do we just run out the dragon? Because we might draw a way to pump the dragon. If we just have it on the field, though, and they play an Elspeth Conqueror's Death, is that good for us or bad for us? It's pretty good for us, actually. And then this is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Um, not enough to play both. Whatever we play is probably getting apparitioned, but we get a four, four for it. Let's play the giant. Really need to draw a way to get through the sky noodle. Key 
keep on scrying. To the top. We're screwed. <laughs> All right. We, I, I think we either draw Embercleave or we lose. That's the way it feels. Hates on the Magda? Okay. Sure. Oh, God. I mean, how do we get the Sky Noodle to attack? I guess we don't really. We just gotta make more threats. Remember, they kept on top. It's gotta be Dees. Come on, Ember Cleave, where are you? That's a shark typhoon. We don't have an instant or sorcery to go with this. Don't really have a good attack. Yep. So now we gotta get them to, I don't know, try to turn the corner. If they attack with the Yorian and the 6-6, we can try to bump to rush them in the opposite direction. Our dragon gets bigger if we draw an adventure spell to go with the hall. That can help, but 6-6 six, six is too much. Like, this game's over. Come on, don't be a coward. Baron, God, I'm so... Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Well, at least they're tapped out. We can top deck, I don't know, Ember Cleave, right? That's what it takes. Why didn't they blink the Baron? Oh, yeah, why didn't they blink the Baron? They wanted to draw a card that badly? That's a mistake. That has to be a mistake. But they're not going to get punished for it, I don't think. That, well, huh? Eh? Eh? Let's find out. Takes a miracle. I mean, they have too many 1-1s, one -ones, right? Uh, that's a lot. Do we need to kill that shark? I feel like we do. Like, this is going to be a pretty defensive Embercleave. Okay. Well, at least a lot of the board is trading. And then we still have a few four power creatures left. I think we should kill... We're not taking any damage right now. I think we should kill the shark. Okay, we've got a few more creatures to throw this sword on and hope for the best. See if they can stop it. They still have four cards. How? How? All that sweet Yorian value. Sweet shark typhoon value. I guess if we draw another dragon, we can put the cleave on it right away. That would be hot. All runs Epiphany, maybe? Oh, we're going to play another Yorian. Gotcha. Seems good. If you imagine if you had a Baron to clean up these tokens. This must be what it feels like. This is the feeling I give my enemies. I don't like it. No wonder they hate me. Big sad. All right, so block here, take 10. My only play is that they're afraid. 
So I've got to hold this land open. Moving the Ember Cleave doesn't really do me any good. But they just have a lethal attack if they go for it. I don't think holding back there and, like, trying to block is ever right. Like, my only play is I hope that they don't go for it here, that they're afraid. They're not afraid. Ugh, that game felt horrible. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Recover. <laughs> Come on, Gruel. Enough mulligans on the draw. Let's let's do some damage. Let's tear it up. Let me do the gruel thing. On the draw. But it's a good hand. Actually has a one drop. If we draw land number three, which we haven't done in all of our games. Hey, there you go. But if we draw land number three, it's a good hand. This one hurts. Scares me a little. Robber of the rich. No! It's not good. That's a card they can use. Alright, Innkeeper, Rimrock Knight, Magda. I think we go for the Magda. We have to watch out for the charger dying here. It can kind of two for one us, but I don't think it'll come to that. The opponent's probably got a hand that's way too good for that. So no blocks here. They're holding back robber. So what are you doing with it? Rimrock Knight. Okay, four creatures. So attack. Play a Lovestruck Beast. We can also take three and play Edgeball Innkeeper and Lovestruck Beast. See what the opponent does. They might fear the Magda. No. So what do you think? I think we take three. I think it's too important that we get to do a whole bunch of awesome. Plus, it gives us the potential chance at a great henge next turn. Yeah, there's an untapped land. Beast is in play. If they have an Ember Cleave, we're in a terrible spot anyway. And we just have to figure out how to make the most of it. And attack with all. Or nothing. That's not bad. I like that. So... I think we attack with this. See what the opponent does. I know that you're screaming to slam the hinge, but it gives away a lot of information if we play the hinge now. Opponent might try to block with the charger to kill the innkeeper as well, which is kind of sucky, but still worth it, I think. So that we can do this. And this. And pass turn. Another haven. Uh, eh? Pump fake, maybe. Maybe. Um, let's see. They could go in for an Ember Cleave here. That would be a lot. That would be a lot of damage to take. Then we could Shatter Skull Smash. I think I'm okay just trading the Beast, to be honest. Make them two for one their way through it. Not exactly a two for one with the Rimrock Knight, but you know what I mean. The Chariot. Your chariot awaits. A lot of options here. You can smash everything but the champion. I definitely want to play more creatures and draw more cards. I think this is a really good one. 
Also attacking with this makes a treasure. So we can Ember Cleave and Rimrock Knight here. Oh my gosh. And then I think we can still smash on the way back. Wow. Is that something you ever say? We can smash on the way back, honey. So this is seven. Yeah, this can be seven. Oh, they're taking it? Okay. They're taking it. That should be enough, I think. Hi. Maybe you've heard of Embercleave. It's a heck of a sword. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. What a rank. Add it to the record books. On the draw. No one drop. No easy red mana. That's a mull. Okay, still no one drop. I, I'm really cursed. I guess I'm going to try keeping it, but I don't... I'm not sure about this. I guess I want to keep the smashing in case I just draw a bunch of lands in a row. Because the third land... Like, the fourth land probably isn't that important when you have all the treasure makers. Oh, okay. Let's go. Let's ride. See if this lives. Come on, live for me one time. No mountain. No bone crusher giant. Frostbite it is. So I'm thinking, is it? Don't know if that's going to turn out right, but I'm thinking, is it? Let's go straight to the Rimrock, and then the Magda can make a treasure and pump it to a 4-1. But against a mulligan hand, all they need is a couple of removal spells, and they should have this in the bag. Unless we draw really well. Or they make a, just a, you know, a mistake. A little foretell action, okay. They're also acting like they still have another removal spell. Another, like, if they have a hand with two frostbites on the play against us, that's just, that's just, like, what are we going to do? We can't beat that. It's never going to happen. We can cleave next turn, but the opponent probably has six more removal spells. <laughs> and here we see them passing without making a play. So the land might be a saw it coming. They didn't do anything with their mana. Do we go for the chariot or do we go for the cleave? I think I go for the chariot. Hold on to your butts. Okay. Nice. Well, if they have a Prismari command, that hurts, but I think we would have seen it. All right. So this must be an All Runs Epiphany. We would have seen... The other uh, foretell favorites, I think. Wow. It was a saw it coming? What were they gambling on? They were trying to draw land so they could cast their own dragon, I guess? It was a saw it coming, and they didn't use it on the chariot. They just went with a really aggressive line and then scooped out. A nice little win streak here would be good. How about some how about some on the on the play? No? I don't make this up. People have started, like, actually putting in comments, like, are you ever on the play? No, I'm not. It's, um... <laughs> this is my life now. This is a good hand, though. At least we have a 1-drop into a 2-drop. Possibly into a 4 and a 5. It is the curve you want. And against Yorian, we're gonna need a fast one. Okay, a little tap land action for the opponent. Let's play our mana generator. See if they have a way to kill this right away. The joys of being on the play. 
Ah, tap land. You love to see it. So they probably have a cultivate, which means we want to hit them as hard as we can next turn. Take advantage. All right, we get the the combo, so to speak. Oh yeah, we get dragon next turn. Pretty good stuff. Okay. Can we get dragon next turn through a Valky? If they take the bone crusher, okay. <laughs> so they're gonna try to, okay. Sure, I mean, you can do that. I guess now I can't kill the Valky easily, but I get to hit them for a lot of damage. And they didn't cultivate. It's kind of whack. Hello? Seems good. Say hello to my little friend. I think we can, yeah, we can play a chariot after this too. Let's go. They're, they're blown away. They can't believe what is happening to them. This is the explosive potential that makes this deck considerably better against the ultimatum deck than other versions. <laughs> We're still going over here. So I think they're going to have binding and they can play binding on the dragon. And that takes some of the sting out of our deck, but we can play beast, power up chariot, an attack for a lot. A lot, a lot. If they have Shadows of Verdict the next turn, I guess that's really good. It would be nice to keep a way to crew the chariot. So we'll see what happens. They've got their own chariot. Here, kitty kitties. All right. Well, the dragon's still alive. That's not... That's not good for them. So, we could play around with some of this. I think we just want to be very aggressive. I think we just want to attack with, like, squad. Maybe not the 1-1, one -one, because then our Lovestruck Beast can't attack. But I think everybody else... We could hold back the Sentinel and just... Alright, we just... We're going to hold back the Sentinel in the 1-1. One, one. Take away some of the easy blocks. And we will have another 2-2. Two, two. Another treasure. Another 2 treasure. Uh, they are going to power up. Can you imagine an Ember Cleave to top off kind of the dream draw? I've had it done to me a few times. I would like to do it to somebody before this video ends. Down to seven. Shadow's Verdict still leaves the dragon behind. And gives me back a Bone Crusher Giant. So let's play this Magda. I guess I didn't have to spend that treasure. I could have played this, tapped the 1-1 one, one with the Sentinel, and had an extra treasure. I don't think it matters too much, though. But we'll see. You never know when something like that could turn out to be a mistake. And so, Magda? By the way, if you get to five treasures, which is totally possible in this deck, you do get to... You do get to fetch more gold span dragons. Which is pretty nice. It's totally possible. We'll see if we get to do it. I guess I get an extra treasure because I get to use the Sentinel on the Magda, right? As long as I do it before uh, the opponent's turn ends. Might need to do full control because I don't know if it'll hold priority for that. 
All right, I guess we have to do it now. Make some blue mana. Because blue's best. Okay, opponent keeps a few critters. They're at seven. I have a feeling they're not attacking, though. And if this dies again, they have to give me back the Bone Crusher Giant. Oh. Oh. It's too much. Too much. The perfect draw is one of our lands. Lucky us. <laughs> Make it rain. <laughs> Alright. That works too. <laughs> oh look, no rank change. Gotta love that new rank bug, as people point out to me. That's probably the reason I've been on 99%. On the play. On the play. Oh, no one drop. I still think we go for it. We need to draw like one or two curve fillers, but I think we go for it. Man, if they just kill the Magda and we draw no creatures, then our draw was going to be poopy anyway. Maybe we should have just mold, but if they don't kill the Magda, we go crazy. And uh, that's not good. That makes Magda pretty bad. But I guess we can smash it. So let's see what happens. Let it live. Let her live. Let her live. Okay, two first striking creatures. And, okay, triple one drop draw from the opponent. How about a lovestruck beast? One time. That's okay. That's okay. Next turn we can smash both creatures, so let's hold this for if the opponent chooses to boast or plays a robber of the rich. Yep, there we go. Look at Shatter Skull smashing, putting in work. Slow down. Torbran, another robber. Jeez, don't steal a Bone Crusher Giant from me. Thank you. Another land? You want a Rimrock or. Wow, that's aggro. I mean, I know that they're mono red, but come on. <gasps> Dragon. And an awesome draw off the top with the Lovestruck Beast. Only one card in hand. The opponent has to play this one to steal. Looks like they're not going to. Pretty sure that we just take this. Down to ten. That card could be an Ember Cleave. They wouldn't necessarily play it there. It's much better if they have a Bone Crusher Giant. But we get to deploy both of these. We could also play Ember Cleave this turn, but it doesn't win. Okay, another Giant. Could be worse, I guess. So, we can play these two creatures. We can also Stomp the Robber. I don't know. We're one mana short of doing it all. I know I want this. Like that, I'm sure of. I think I hold on to this. I don't know. Th this one's really close. I think we play the creatures. Although, often when you can remove a creature, that's just better than trying to block it. So let's play this. Oof. What if they do have an Ember Cleave? If we block here, this is 5, this is 10. They can't beat me. Yeah. Let's do it like this. 
also disguises that we have a giant. Next turn, if we cast Cleave and Bone Crusher Giant, uh, Stomp to face is lethal for a total of 12 damage exactly. So we just have to get through this. We also might need this to kill the robber if the robber wants to, I don't know, block. It does have reach after all. Aw, oh, here we go. And the card is a dragon. Thank God they can't cast that this turn. Thank goodness they can't cast that this turn. All right, blocks like this. I think the opponent was trying to hit an Ember Cleave of mine, was what they were hoping for. But Cleave is in my hand, my friend. It is a glitch that reduces the life total in that fashion you just saw. People always ask. On the play. On the play. On the play so we can win today. Mm. On the play. Oh my goodness. What an adventurous hand. Yeah, baby. Rock and roll them. We might passage next turn. Looks like our opponent. Hmm. Who knows what it could be? No need to passage because we drew another land. Gonna hold this stomp. I don't know what my opponent's up to. But I know a couple 1-1s one make a Lovestruck Beast all the stronger. See if they want to play a Thought Thief. Stompy stomps. It does take us off of playing the Love Struck Beast, but it keeps them from milling us. Bluff a Frostbite or a Shock here. Or a Rimrock Knight. Just give them the wrong impression. Alright, how about this turn? We can stomp, but we can't do anything else. It would set us back another turn, but it would kill another Soaring Thought Thief, so... This will hold priority, disguise some things. Here comes a beast. It enables the henge. Mystical dispute. So rogues, no Luris. Which means we have to be ready for Zareth San. So we want to keep this bone crusher stomp available where we can, when we can. We also don't want to rush to crack this because cards in the graveyard can be fuel for our opponent. Rimrock Knight. Okay, let's try this again. So we don't want to walk into like an play rogue, kill thing, attack, steal thing. But we do still need to get a creature down. It's pretty rough. I guess there's no good way to do it. If they have that perfect combination of nonsense, then I guess we're we're sunk. All right, Brazen Borrower on the 1-1. One, one. Well, the good news is... <laughs> good news is we still have a 5-5 five, five and might play Henge. The bad news is it might not be the right play when all's said and done. All right, we need to bone crush our opponent's Brazen Borrower when they go for it on end step to keep the Zareth away. And if they play the Zareth, we need to kill that too. So I guess we just pass. Mm-hmm. Let's make absolutely sure that we don't somehow not end up with a forest in our deck. All right, four cards grave. They're going to go for the borrower here, I'm guessing. Here it comes. So we go stomp your enforcer. Resolve your borrower. Stomp your borrower. Try to keep that pesky Zareth from happening.
They might have Jawari Disruption. Big question here, Drown in the Lock won't do this. Like, it won't, it won't protect you. Resolves, nice. All right, let's go for the Giant. They might have Drown, but if they do, they can't Xerath. Okay. And five cards in Graveyard. Still hitting land drops. You like to see that. This can't be sacrificed yet. You like to see that. Here comes Bone Crusher. How far can you go? We can we find a way to get in front of this wind robber? Zerithsan is nasty and can steal what? A Goldspan Dragon or a Lovestruck Beast? But I guess if that's their last card, they don't have a counter spell. So do we go for the chariot? Do we go for another giant? I think chariot's the most upside. Okay, their last card's a drown. It's not a Zerith. Two drowns down. Okay, they hit land. They're up to seven. Did they draw into the story? Not yet. <laughs> Dragon? Resolves. Oh, that's a beautiful sight. Let's go crazy. Why the heck not? Why the heck not? Draw. Draw. Feels so good. Feels so good. Sword? Well, somehow we got there. <laughs> it beats rogues. It beats flooded, no end to the story rogues, but it's still rogues. Top 500. It's good to be back. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up. And this deck, it slices, it dices. It absolutely churns when it's on the play with a curve. And it shouldn't be too hard to curve. We've got... 12 potential one drops we've got so many options on turn two and that's without a sentinel playing your three drops and if you manage to ramp into a chariot or a dragon uh things get out of hand really fast but just deploying your adventure creatures quickly is often enough so uh the number one takeaway and i usually have this with aggro decks because i'm so like opposed to mulliganing habitually the number one takeaway i usually have is that i should have mulliganed more often and more aggressively i should be trying more five and four card hands because this this deck with a curve is like night and day from this deck when it walks into one or two removal spells and then dies uh or just doesn't play a creature on turns uh on turn one like on the draw if you don't have a creature on turn one it's probably a mull you need some love struck beast in your hand another thing that the deck is missing is one drops and Raphael Levy posted some about this on Twitter already, but one card I'm eager to try in the deck is this one, which is making its way into some mono red builds that is Hall Monitor. This card out of Strixhaven, the ability to come down and use mana, give you a mana sink for all those treasures and make a creature unable to block is pretty cool. Also kind of cool, you can target your own Goldspan Dragon to produce more treasures. Why would you produce more treasures? Because if you get five, you get to sack to Magda and go get another dragon or an Embercleave or a Henge, which is all really cool. So I don't know what I would replace. I think the Chariots are really good. So that's a tough one for me to cut because we do like ramping into them. So it's really hard for me to find a card worth cutting from the deck. The adventure package is so tight. The mythic artifacts so impactful. The dragon's so absolutely crucial that it's really hard to see where you could trim for a hall monitor or two. Maybe you'll figure that out. I never used Hall of Oracles uh, either to make mana or to put a plus one plus one counter on one of my creatures. So I'm just going to have to continue trusting Raphael Levy when he says that it's good. It never lined up or did anything for me, but it never hurt me either. Shatter Skull Smashing is a four of. I don't usually recommend having four of these mythic lands, but in this case, 
like having multiples of this card, having the chance of top decking this card was absolutely essential. And I think it's one of the main reasons that the deck works. It is a place to put that spare mana and it is a rare removal spell in the deck. There just aren't removal cards outside of Smashing and Giant. All right, so that's the summary of the deck. Remember to follow Raphael Levy on Twitter did a really sweet deck after all and uh i hope you gruel and aggro and adventure fans enjoy smashing the ladder there's still one or two days left in the season let's check that really quick all right 469 nice uh but yeah a little bit over 48 hours left in the season if you're looking to rank up fast and get there maybe gruel is the answer yet again thank you for watching this video as always i will see you in the next video you're cool